tell me a little bit about the opportunity, how it came up, and what it was like working with John on the film. So um, it came up. I was uh, I was given the script to read to check out, and it was immediately struck in the script by how unique it was. The fact that there's no dialogue, you know, a couple couple lines here and there. Um, but um, so I was thinking, wow, what a you know what a great canvas for working musically, and and uh, and the story seems to be really cool. Then I I went up to uh, where they were shooting in uh, upstate New York and met with John, saw the set, saw some footage, and saw that it was a uh, really beautiful movie. And, um, uh, it, the, you know, the acting was amazing. And um, so I was like, wow, I, I, I was, sign me up. So, yeah. um, so it started out with... Um, uh, John would send me, you know, just some pieces as he was finishing up shooting. Uh, he would send me just some pieces of music that he that he found inspiring, not not necessarily for a scene in his movie, but um, just sort of, I guess, like a vibe that he had in his head while he was shooting. Uh, like, for instance, there was a um, Peter Gabriel cover of uh, Bowie's Heroes song that he he liked and. And so from this, you know, um, me putting together uh, ideas, I, um, I, the first thing that I wanted to achieve was, you know, it, more than this being a, a horror movie, to me, it was a, uh, a family movie. It's a, um, a, a movie um, about the strength of family and what you, what you do for your kids and your um your family and um and I think that song is what what summarized that and that so that was like what I tried to work on first and um and also the fact that they hadn't um been around sound for such a long time that they might have a slightly skewed uh interpretation of music mm -hmm. and what it is so um so I wrote the theme that I think on the CD is called the family theme. Um, we changed some titles, so uh, but the um, it, it's what plays in the beginning of the movie when they're walking out of the pharmacy, mm -hmm. and um, and and one of the things I did was uh, I I took the piano and um, detuned all the all the black notes on the piano down half step. Uh, sorry, a quarter tone, just so that um, so that um, it would be, you know, like not quite perfect. I mean, it, not that it would be totally out of tune, like you could still uh, hear the, the melody and all, but um, just mm -hmm. something that was a little bit off about it. Yeah. Um, and then from there, started working on um, ideas for the monster, the alien stuff, and. Um, Sorry, it's a long answer to your question. But <laughs> it's all good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, one of the awesome things about the movie is how three-dimensional sort of John's world is that he created. Um, so tell me a little bit about your process as a composer of sort of translating that world that he created into sort of a musical language. Um, yeah, so so uh, the, the, I think the, the key thing was to – Figure out like I, I spoke about the the, the family theme um, for the um, uh, you know coming up with something signature for the, the creatures so that um, because everything's so quiet mm -hmm. you couldn't be it couldn't be something it had to be almost like a, something that you would subconsciously feel rather than be like oh here's music now because it would call attention to itself right away mm -hmm. um, so. It was, um, um, I had this idea of a, of a, like a, a low bending thing, almost like you feel almost like a little queasy in your stomach type mm -hmm. of thing when you hear it. And, um, and that evolved into like, uh, a motive, a theme for the aliens and, and, and there's places in the movie where you just hear that and you have a sense that things aren't good. Um, 
And uh, then, you know, it can be this other places where it becomes a little bit more full blown when there's a, a lot of action happening. But, um, mm-hmm. but um, like you said, the, 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 the dimensionality that he conveyed in the um, on screen had to be had to be recognized musically as well. And, and um, the, the biggest thing I was aware of was not overwhelming the picture um, yeah. with with the music. That it that it be um, something more felt than than um, you know consciously acknowledged. Mm-hmm. So what were the spotting sessions like for the film, noting that everything is mostly silent in terms of the actors and the dialogue? How did you really determine where music would go, where it wouldn't go, where you would just sort of let the environment and the sound design do the work? What was that process like? Um, it was an evolving process. The film really was changing up until the very end. And, in fact, I mm-hmm. didn't even see the the monsters until maybe a few days before we were scoring, um, just because it's... It was such an amazing uh, effect, but you know, until up until yeah, I mean, there was you know, I was working with a picture where uh, you know, the the monster was John actually like in a in like a weird suit, you know, like so it's mm-hmm. it was it had a totally different feel to it, and I would send him um, ideas that I worked on, and they they would cut things that that worked into different scenes in the in the movie and then they'd send it back and say, what do you think, you know? And, um, then that might inspire me to, to write that scene. You know, I have, um, a direction from them that they, that they liked. Um, and, and then John came out to LA, came to my studio and we actually sat down, went through the movie. Um, yeah, you're right. There is a lot of quiet in the movie. And, um, I think the things that were decided to be music, musical were, Things where there is a subtext to what's going on, like when, for instance, um, John is up on top of the silo and he's looking out after the death of his kid and he's looking around and looking for other fires and it's a very lonely moment for him and and the fact that he took the death of his kid to be much different than than Emily Blunt's character did. You know, she was like, you know, she was like the the strength the family at that point she's like um we have two kids here we have to look after and and you know um telling the story of them each having their own uh um dealing with that and then coming together as a family at the dinner scene and um things like that um that the music could supply something that was um you know it's there in the acting and all but um Something that is like the subtext to what what was happening, like the, to give the, a, another dimension to what you're just seeing on the screen, and and hopefully not call too much attention to like oh there's a music cue playing, but more just something that you pick up on. Yeah, yeah, it definitely felt like it was blended into the world. I mean, everything was so visceral and extremely, um, yeah, I think visceral is the right way to put it. It's just super dark mm-hmm. and it really gets under your skin. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so there's certain moments in the film and in the score in specific that feel like they're constantly rising in tension, like the strings are doing really sort of intense glissandos. And how do you mm-hmm. keep that that really intense um, musical anxiety sort of going? Yeah, that's that's tough. I mean, once her water breaks to the end of the movie, it, it, yeah. it's it's like a nonstop um, rising um, tension and. Yeah. Um, one of the things we use is an old is an old trick. It's called um, um, uh, a shepherd tone, which mm, yeah. it, you know, which uh, uh, is sort of like you know a barber pole that that's constantly going up. Um, and and there's there's definitely we did that with the strings in in certain places. Uh, um, and there is a sort of a, a pulse that goes through a lot of the the, the score um, that I think helps accent that. I, it was definitely a a challenge looking at this um, you know, long section of the movie as an arc and, um, and finding 
ways to make it feel like it's the, the tension's always increasing and not letting you off the hook. Um, and sometimes it's a question of letting the sound uh, just play, and um, and and that in itself um, can be more scary than any music, you know. Um, so um, I think working hand in hand with the sound world and just and the music and creating one sound environment, I think that was key to mm. um, to achieving that, as you say, like a visceral increase in tension in the movie. Yeah, absolutely. So I think one of the things that, that you're incredible at as a composer is forming these really unique sound palettes, whether it was for the Holmesmen um, or other films, you know, and how did, how long do you spend sort of picking your sounds and writing suites or what's your process like at the beginning, sort of formulating your tools for the rest of the project? The, the beginning is the most crucial point, I think, because you're, um, you sort of, you know, just like, um, you know, a tree comes from an acorn or whatever, you're, you're sort of putting the things together f that uh, the score will flourish from. And um, we did. I mean, there wasn't a lot of time on this. I started on it just before Thanksgiving. And, um, you know, our, our first scoring sessions were in uh, January. Um, and the, uh, the, the thing was to come up with um, – source material that would be able to use. One of the things was, you know, this piano, working out, the, tuning the piano so it wouldn't sound too out. Um, and the, um, and you know, all the electronic stuff, too, is acoustical sounds that are, um, they've been manipulated electronically. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, getting the, the percussive and string and brass elements that, we could then manipulate and um, turn into what became the score. That 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 all happened, you know, early early on. Uh, so so yeah, th there's the the concept um, of what the score needs to do is uh, can take up a lot more time, and it seems like cues aren't getting written. But actually, you know, it, it's I think the most valuable time because once the puzzle's solved, then you can just sort of yeah you know, do the scenes. Yeah, absolutely. So for the final question, since the Global Composers Network is made up of a bunch of aspiring composers, I'm curious if you had one piece of advice for composers that are just getting started in the industry, what would that be? Um, I think there's so many opportunities now because everybody can make movies um, and there's uh, so many interesting stories that could be told. Um I think it's an exciting time to be a composer. Also, it's easy to have a little home studio. It's not like it was in the past. Um, so uh, I think it, it really affords a lot of opportunity to composers. I, I'd say, you know, just try to not copy anybody. Just do your own thing. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day uh, to, sure. to speak about this film because I really – think that this film is absolutely extraordinary i think you guys all did a great job on it and it's definitely it definitely deserves all the love it's getting so congratulations oh. on that well thank you so much it's very kind of you amazing all right so you have a good rest of your day thank you so much again you too. and okay uh, all the best